Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Channel 781 News special report. I'm excited that today we have our first ever interview with a seated elected official. Um, it's someone very appropriate because we've talked about his work a lot on our shows. I am here with Ward 9 City Councilor Jonathan Paz. Hello. Thanks for having me, Josh. And it's great to be here with you both. Thanks a lot for coming on. We really appreciate it. And I'm also here with my Channel 781 co-host, Emily Sapiria. Hello. So uh, just to clarify what I just said, we had Christine Mackin on right after she left office. We had Councillor Bradley MacArthur on just before she took office. So now uh, Councillor Paz is officially our first sitting elected official. So big day for us in Channel 781 News. Um, so Jonathan passes in his second term as Waltham City Councilor for Ward 9. In 2019, he beat out long-serving Councilor Robert Logan for that seat. He was 26 at the time, which makes him, we think, the second youngest ever city councilor. Uh, one way that he stands out on the council is instead of just responding to issues that are specific to his ward, he organizes people around issues also that are uh, important to the whole city or to the whole state. And in fact, recently he was organizing protests against the signature collecting for what's now question four on this year's ballot and was sued by the Republican Party for doing that. Um, so we'll ask him about question four and a bunch of other issues um, that we know are important to him here in Waltham. So I'm going to hand it off to Emily. So thanks again, Councillor Paz. Um, so tell me a little bit, how did you get involved with question four? Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for having me again. Um, question four, I mean, I feel like I, I kind of grew up into it, right? Um, I grew up in Waltham as the son of undocumented Bolivian immigrants. So, um, you know, my family driving down the street uh, without a driver's license was something that was very personal and dear uh, to my heart. Um, so I've been involved in the push for the Work and Family Mobility Act. Um, I think going into five years now that I've advocated for it uh, in my own personal time. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's been a 16 year movement process. Um, and the Work and Family Mobility Act is really an opportunity to give everyone who has, uh, who can uh, and, and wants to get on the road, uh, regardless of their immigration status, an opportunity to get trained, tested, and insured. So then when we know that they're on the streets, they're going to be just as well registered, trained, uh, and insured as anyone else on the road. Um, so the Work and Family Mobility Act has been something that I know personally, and I know across the Waltham community that can benefit a lot of our working families because people just want to be able to get to their grocery store. They want to be able to get to their, drop off their kids to the school, go to work without having fear of being pulled over and not having the necessary documents um, to show that um, they know what they're doing on the road, right? Uh, so it's it's been a long time process um, and <laughs> it wouldn't be Massachusetts if we didn't have a referendum about it, right? So we're gonna go now into um, election day and Massachusetts voters will decide if they want to uh, repeal or keep the Work and Family Mobility Act. So yes on four means that we're gonna keep the law that we passed with a super majority in the state house, uh, bipartisan um, effort um, and a no would repeal it. So it's been a long time coming, but it's really just a common sense law that even our local law enforcement is behind. I mean, our chief of police, our local DA, our sheriff. So it's just common sense. It keeps our roads safer. Um, and it's, if it isn't clear or obvious, it's very near and dear my heart. Fantastic, really appreciate that. Um, and so one thing I've been curious about, but haven't been able to find information about is that question four, doesn't appear on the voter information packet. Do you have any insight as to um, why that happened or um, what anybody can do if they're seeking more information about question four beyond tuning into their local news? Yeah, absolutely. And this is why I'm part of why I'm here in the show. Um, it's that it's really flying under the radar. Um, but the short of it is that uh, it got registered as a ballot question very last minute in September, I believe like mid-September. So it it missed um, the printing and the distribution that all the other 
ballot questions had. So it's on the ballot. It's going to be on for election day. Um, but uh, I can tell you a long story about a very long summer. <laughs> Not sure if you want me to share that one. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, please share if you've got a great I'd story. I'd like to hear more about yeah, hear that work. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's I think a, it's a very telling story. I'll just say it like that. Um, so we pass, we make history in the state house, Massachusetts state house. We make history um, in July where um, we we not only passed the Working Family Mobility Act, but we passed it twice <laughs> because as soon as it passed, the governor vetoed it. Uh, we knew he was going to veto it, um, and then we had such overwhelming support in both uh, with state reps and senators that it was passed again, um, over while overriding the governor's veto. And we did not have one week to celebrate. We did not have one week, not seven days passed by, six days and a few hours passed by. And um, the leadership in the Massachusetts Republican Party went around pushing for um, gathering signature effort, which is completely um, you know, within the scope of the law. They have a right to try to repeal something, um, but they went around, they invested this entire summer um, gathering signatures, misinforming people, lying to people, fear mongering, using all these xenophobic and racist slurs that we know that we've known for decades, right? Um, so they they got enough. They needed a uh, forty thousand plus, like they needed over forty thousand signatures, um, and they were successful in gathering signatures. But you know, some of us felt that they were misinforming people, and you know, if they have a right to use the First Amendment and say some terrible things, we have the right to have a public debate about it and say that those things are pretty racist and misinforming and terrible. Um, so there was a, a there was an effort to essentially have a broader dialogue because they were going around grocery stores, um, I don't know, gun shops, um, and all these other places essentially gathering signatures, lying to people about what this was about and getting those signatures. Um, so. It was a concerted effort um, to, in my view, play political football with the lives and the safety of Massachusetts taxpayers. Um, and they know it's a gubernatorial year. Like these things are not a coincidence. They're, they're very much uh, in sync. So uh, it was very frustrating to see that they got enough signatures, but even more so because, again, they're toying with the lives of other people. So it sounds like there's now a very limited window of time to get out the information um, that indeed that this is on the ballot, this referendum is on the ballot, um, and that the ask is um, for people to vote yes on it. Um, how can people um, assist in that effort? Um, are there ways to help? With, yeah, with your initiative. Yeah, I mean, so this is uh, a little bit outside my work in the city council. Uh, in my own personal life, um, you know, I, I feel very passionate about this as any other person does. Um, and I'm having, I've had uh, Tuesday canvases, phone banking, you know, it's a tall order to run a ballot campaign with like, let's say six weeks, maybe just under two months worth of time to get out, to get out the word make sure people know what's at stake, making sure that people really understand this because there's a lot of misinformation flying around. But yeah, I mean, if people want to get involved, they can definitely reach out to me. Um, and we're having, um, we're even going to partner with some Brandeis students who want to get out the word. Uh, we work with already some local leaders, amazing group of Latina mothers who have been phone banking out of my, out of my dining room. Um, but, you know, we're trying to get the word out. We're going to, we're trying to get people to really be activated and engaged on this issue because uh, for too long, people have been asking for this. You can walk down the street and talk to your local barber, your grocery store worker who may be an immigrant without status, they will tell you they need a license. <laughs> um, so it's, it's just such an important issue and uh, I'm more than happy to get more people involved, but we are seeing yes on four for safer roads. When you were talking about the misinformation campaign around question four, when they were here on Waltham, we heard them telling people that the most important reason for this is because if if undocumented immigrants can apply for a driver's license, that means they can also vote, which is false. 
And this isn't just something uh, that we heard because I just saw actually before we got on the interview on Facebook two days ago, Jim Lyons, the chair of the Republican Party, posted the exact same thing on Facebook. So they've turned this into a thing where it's not a clash of opinions. It's a clash of facts. It's a disagreement on facts. And that's kind of like a disturbing trend, you know, in politics. And so in addition to all the other reasons, <laughs> to vote yes on this. I think it's important to vote yes on this to push back on the fact that they're really blatantly and opening, openly using false facts to try to push this. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad you brought that up because it's so important to dispel that. Uh, everywhere we go, we need to dispel that because they do not have anything to do with each other. The Secretary of State came out even speaking, you know, correcting the governor <laughs> of Massachusetts, telling him, hey, we have two different tracks here um, because there are other people who can't vote but have access to license to, to a driver's license in Massachusetts. We have the existing infrastructure. We have the existing regulations to make sure that um, those two things aren't confused. Uh, so it, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, without naming names, um, some people that are very cynical in this state in this state and in this country uh don't have anything of value politically to provide so they have to resort to these xenophobic racist just they're just such tired stereotypes um and they're so easy to dispel so i just hope that the good people of waltham the good people of massachusetts understand that this is about keeping our road safer. It has nothing to do with the border. <laughs> it's a state matter. We don't control the federal federal laws. This is everything to do with people just being insured, tested, and, and, and registered um, drivers. So then we're all a little bit safer. We're all a little bit more aware of who's on the road. And, and yeah, it's just so important to, to humanize this issue, but just to understand how practical it is. Um, so I really appreciate that, Josh, because, you know, there are there's misinformation everywhere, but we can't let that permeate at least the Waltham level of understanding. Great. Thank you so much for providing more background and information on that important question.